Hi, I am Dr. Silveraj, your surgical educator from Malaysia. Welcome back to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical tux rotation. I promise you will become competent in, in clinical problem solving and surgical decision making if you are going to watch these videos over and over again. So today in this episode, I am going to discuss one more image based question on lower GI tract pathologies. So our patient is a 38 years old male patient complained of recent history of large mass protruding out of anal canal. There is history of high risk sexual contact with other men that is positive. On examination, there is a large fungating mass protruding out of the anal canal which you are seeing clearly here in this clinical picture. Yeah, This fungating mass is protruding out of the anal canal here. So these are the two clinical pictures you are seeing and these are the six questions. The question number one, with this clinical scenario and these clinical two clinical pictures, what is your probable diagnosis and why you are saying so? What are the two types of this pathology? That is question number one. Question number two, what does the term, term AIN mean, that is anal intraepithelial neoplasia. And how is this relevant to this patient? Question number three, what are the risk factors for this pathology? Question number four, what are the clinical features of this pathology? Number five, how will you manage this patient? Question number six, what is the treatment for recurrent anal cancer post chemo radiation. So now I request all my viewers to pause the video and try to answer all these six questions. So after answering all these six questions, I request you to verify your answer with the correct answers which I am going to discuss in the subsequent slides. So question number one, with this clinical scenario and the clinical pictures, what is your most probable diagnosis and why you are saying so? And what are the two types of this pathology? So the correct answer is, the most probable diagnosis is anal carcinoma. Reasons, uh, there is a mass in the anal area which touched on bleeding. This is what you are seeing here. A fungating mass is protruding out of the anal canal, clearly you are seeing it. Patient has a high risk sexual contact, putting him at risk for HPV, that is human papilloma virus infection, which is a high risk factor to develop anal carcinoma. So this cancer can develop from either inside the anal canal, you are seeing in this picture clearly, Either this can develop from inside the anal canal or from the anal margin here. So it, it, it can be either inside or it may be in the anal margin in the skin itself. So question number two, what does the term AIN mean and how this is relevant to this patient? So the correct answer is AIN means anal intraepithelial neoplasia. Actually, this is a pre-cancerous condition and it is graded from 1 to 3 depend on, depending on the degree of dysplasia in these epithelial cells. These changes are driven by human papilloma virus serotypes 16, 18, 31 and 33. This is also associated with cervical and vaginal intraepithelial neoplasia. Smoking is a risk factor and patients should avoid smoking. Hyperkeratosis is also a feature and the, this hyperkeratotic lesion appears 
white in color. Staining this AIN, that is anal intra uh, epithelial neoplasia with acetic acid, make these changes so obvious to the naked eyes. So you have to stain it with acetic acid and then you can see it clearly. This uh, anal intra epithelial neoplasia. But you have to do what it is called mapping biopsies to check malignant transformation of these AANs because these AANs are precancerous condition. So you have to take biopsies from several areas to rule out malignant transformation. So question number three, what are the risk factors for this pathology? That is the anal carcinoma. The correct answer is, okay, human papilloma virus infection is number one risk factors, especially type 16, 18, this is zero type, 16, 18, 31, 33, and 35. <coughs> the mode of spread is, of course, the sexual intercourse, especially anal intercourse with females and homosexual activity in male patients. The number two cause is HIV. All HIV exposure categories, including female anal intercourse and male homosexual activity, injection, of the drugs that is drug abuse or even blood transfusion is, is these are all risk factors for development of because of hiv infection these patients can develop anal carcinoma smoking and tobacco use is a, also a risk factor this will this this cause fivefold increase in the development of the cancer so benign anal conditions like hemorrhoids fissure and fistula are not associated with it increases. So they, they won't change into, I mean, malignancy. Question number four, what are the clinical features in this pathology? How these patients are, uh, they will present to you. That is what clinical features. Mainly it is symptoms and signs. So majority of these patients will present with bleeding fear. This is also known as hematochesia or blood, red blood per rectum. This is the most, I mean, commonest symptom. This is the commonest symptom. The pain, tenismus, and pruritis may also, it may present. Sometimes there may be a mass, like in this case, you are seeing a fungating mass in the anal area. Mass in the inguinal area because of metastasis to the inguinal lymph nodes. So that you can palpate the, I mean, enlarged inguinal lymph nodes because of the metastasis from this anal carcinoma. However, the diagnosis should be confirmed by taking a biopsy after doing a proctoscopy if it is intra-anal mass. If it is lying outside, I mean the anal margin, you can take a biopsy from that even without proctoscopy. Staging can be done by using CECT tap. That is tap means thorax, abdomen and pelvis. So these are the three areas you have to do the CECT to rule out any secondary deposits either in the lung or in the liver or in the peritoneal cavity. Or instead of uh, CT, you can use MRI also, the same TEP. TEP means thorax, abdomen, and pelvis. And <coughs> in some cases, you can also do PET scan uh, to find out the secondaries. So question number five, how will you manage this patient? The correct answer is, okay, number one, it is the treatment of AINs or the precancerous condition. You can do local surgery. You can exercise those areas which are having this uh, anal intra-epithelial neoplasia. You can exercise it or you can use photodynamic therapy to avulse, I mean, to destroy these uh, AINs. Or you can apply some immunomodulator locally. Example is imi Q mod. This is a drug. This you can apply locally in that area. Imiq mod. Treatment of invasive cancer is always chemo radiotherapy. This is the nigro regimen. So th this you have to follow. Both chemotherapy as well as radiotherapy. Irrespective of the stage, initially to begin with, you have to try this chemo radiotherapy only in all anal carcinomas. This is the combination of chemotherapy and radiotherapy. This is known as nigro regimen. You have to use the chemotherapy, 5-fluorouracil, mitomycin or biliomycin, 
cisplastin and adriamycin. This is the chemotherapy regimen. You have to use that along with radiotherapy for 3 to 6 weeks, 4.5 centigrade you have to give. So, so you have to give it at least for 6 weeks and then you have to reassess the tumor. If there is good response, tumor is, uh, I mean, regress, then you have to excise only the scar which is remaining there, you have to excise, that's all. You need not to do a radical surgery. Suppose even after treating the patient for six weeks of chemo radiotherapy, if tumor is still there without any, without regressing, then you have to do a radical APR surgery. That is abdominal perineal resection you have to do. This is the treatment uh, for, for uh, this is the chemo radiotherapy. This is what usually they give. Usually we won't go for surgery to begin with. So question number six, what is the treatment for recurrent anal cancer post chemo radiation? That is, after giving this chemo radiation therapy, if tumor recurs, then how will you treat? That is the meaning of this question. So the correct answer is the patients who won't respond to chemo radiotherapy or the nigro regimen are T4 tumor, adenocarcinomas, immunocompromised patients, those who are having, uh, apart from anal cancer, fistula also in the anal region, and those who are intolerant to chemotherapy. So what you have to do if, if it, is, it hasn't got any response, then you have to do a surgery called salvage AP resection or radical AP resection involving excision of larger area of ischiorectal and perirectal fat along with the skin. So you have to excise uh, extensive area in this one. So after that, there will be perineal defect. The perineal defect result after this radical AP resection should be closed by a plastic surgeon by a flap cover. So, so you have to ask the uh, plastic surgeon only to make a flap cover because usually, primarily, you may not be able to close this extensive raw area in the anal region. So three to five year survival is 50%. Depends on the ability to completely remove these tumors at the time of surgery, that is RO resection. So without any uh, residual tumor, you have to excise the whole tumor completely. That ability, if you are doing it very well, okay, the survival is only 50%. So thank you very much for watching these videos. If you think that this video is very useful, kindly subscribe to this channel and share these videos in your social media. Kindly click the bell button also to get the notification regarding my recent uploads. Thank you once again for watching this video. Let us meet in an, yet another video. Until then, bye-bye.